Hey, what's going on guys? It's Larry Packmaster Dog Training. Um, I spoke about this case a few times now with uh, Maverick, the German Shepherd puppy, but I really think it's important to make a complete video explaining exactly what I dealt with with this dog and, uh, and how we got through it. Because uh, for me, it's important for a couple of reasons. For one, it shows the power and the effectiveness of good e-collar training. It shows just how much you can benefit from this tool when it's taught and used properly, okay? The folks that refuse to use this tool, they're just missing out and it can help dogs in so many different ways that I even found a new way with this dog that I never really thought about before, okay? And, and the other reason is um, you have to realize that there's more than one way to do things and also you're going to run into problems that are going to stump you if you're a dog trainer every now and then you're going to get a dog that really stumps you and and this was this was tough this this really this really kicked my ass and uh you know i was miserable for a good week and a half almost two weeks as long as it took to get to get through this but if it wasn't for com doing something completely different i'd probably still be struggling with the dog so I want to just take you through what I did and how we accomplished it. And it's going to be even more boring than the other videos. I'm sorry about that. But I think it's important for some of you folks, you know, to, to realize you're going to face this. And maybe if you come across this exact same problem, it'll benefit, all right? So let's start from the beginning. Um, Maverick's owners came from pretty far away. They drove several hours to, to get here and drop him off for a boarding train. He's a six-month-old German Shepherd puppy. Um, what I found out later after I talked to the owners after I was having problems, they took him out of a pretty bad situation. You know, they found him on Craigslist and when they went to see the dog, it was, it was really horrific conditions and they're, they're big hearted people. So instead of leaving him and saying, no, we're going to go get a well-bred dog, they took the dog because they couldn't leave him in the situation he was in. So, you know, they're good folks. That's, they're good folks, big hearted people, good people. So my hat's off to them. All right, so the day they dropped him off here, while, I mean, he was here a few minutes, and I noticed when he got out of the truck, he had no interest in them, no interest in me. He was just real skittish and, and aloof, and uh, he slipped out of his flat buckle collar, and he went off and sat by himself. Luckily, he didn't take off. Okay, that's the initial drop-off. So owners leave. I have the dog. First time I go to take him out of a out of the crate I open the crate I go to bring him out I go to put the leash on and he pees everywhere okay not so rare I've dealt with it before and I've explained how I deal with that and I've been very successful in fixing that and it's helped a lot of you out there a lot of you have sent me emails saying man what you did worked fantastic so what I did with him was since he pees as soon as I put the leash on what I do is I approach very carefully from the side, never head on. I don't make any eye contact. I don't acknowledge the dog. I do it very nonchalantly. I let him see and smell that I have some really good high value food in my hand. And I place it on the floor in front of the crate where he can see and smell it about two or three feet. Then I open the crate and normally most dogs will go straight for the food. And while his nose is down on the food and he's eaten, I quickly and gently slip the leash on and take him out. Well, with Maverick, like with most dogs, it worked right away. He stopped peeing, so it worked fantastic, and it usually does work right away. Well, it worked great for a day or two, okay? So after, after that first day or two, what he decided was the second I would come out, the second he would see me, he would just start peeing. I mean, completely empty his bladder in the crate. Okay, not because he was excited and happy to see me. He just became very uncomfortable. His back would hunch a little bit, and it's a, and you could tell like he just couldn't help it. He could not hold the pee. He would release it, and I mean empty. There was nothing left. It was horrible. So I spent that first week and a half to two weeks just constantly washing his crate. So what I had to do was I had to keep his crate by one of my garage doors. And when he would pee, I'd have to just pull it outside with him in it at times and just hose it out and clean it and then get him out. And I did this constantly. And believe me, I was miserable. I was one pissed off son of a bitch. It was hard to deal with. But guess what? You can't get mad at the dog. You can't show the dog you're angry because it'll just get worse. So while he's sitting there peeing everywhere, I have to just ignore it. Nothing I can do. And um, I did 
I tried everything I know of doing to help this dog. I mean everything. The odd thing is, once he was out and we were training and working, he's a little superstar. Fantastic. Loves to work, loves to interact with me. Couldn't be any better. But yet, in that crate, when I approach, he's a mess. And then even once I had him out and he was doing great, when I go to put him back in and take the leash off, same thing. He becomes very uncomfortable, and if there's anything left in his bladder, he'll pee going into the crate. So it was pretty bad. I kept trying everything under the sun. Everything I could think of, I tried. I used my dogs. I sat with him for an hour at a time next to his crate, just reading and getting him comfortable with me. I fed him through the crate. I dropped food in there. I mean, you name it, I did it. I did it all, and nothing worked, and I was at my wit's end. So I decided to try com something completely, completely different. What I did was I had his e-collar on him and I let him drink plenty of water and I put him in there and I let him stay in there for a long time, you know, long enough. I don't mean like for a day or nothing. I just mean long enough to where I know he'd have a full bladder and have, would have to go out because I didn't want false results, okay? I wanted him to have to pee. So what I did was from in the house, with his e-collar on, he's in the garage, in his crate. I went right to his working level, which is very, very low on his mini educator, very low level, single digits. And he works great. He is already trained with the e-collar, already conditioned. So that's important to, to understand, guys. I didn't just put an e-collar on him and start pressing it. He understands the e-collar. It's important to stress that. So then what I did from inside my house, I tapped the e-collar. I waited about 10 seconds, I tapped it again. I waited 10 seconds and tapped it again. So I did this a few times before I entered the garage. And what I was hoping was that that tap with the e-collar would get his mind thinking, get his wheels turning. Because see, normally when he feels the tap of the e-collar, he knows, okay, that means pay attention to me. What am I asking for? He's very in tune to that and he understands it. So when I walked out to the garage, guess what? He wasn't hunched over, his ears weren't back, his ears were straight up sticking out of his crate and he was looking at me like, okay, what do you want? I'm ready. And I was like, okay, this is fantastic. So as I approached him, I would tap and then throw some food towards his crate, his kibble, because I was kind of far away. So before I can get close to it, I literally would tap, throw some food, and as I got closer, I would tap the e-collar, drop some food. I walked straight to the back door, I opened it. Okay, picture this in your head. I opened the back door, he's fairly close to it. It leads to my yard, which is fenced. I'd walk back with my side, passing his crate. Not to him, passing it. So it's on my right side. I tap the e-collar, I drop food, and as he goes to eat it, I open just the top latch on the crate, and I kept walking. Now on the way back towards his crate, going towards the outside, towards the door. Again, I tap and drop food and very quickly open the bottom latch and walk right outside. Guess what? No pee. He didn't even think of peeing. As a matter of fact, he came out like a little bullet and was ready to go and was sitting in front of me waiting for, you know, what was next. Man, I was blown. I was so happy. I can't explain to you how happy I was. Let me explain something to you guys. With all the dogs I have trained over the years, <clears throat> and I've done a lot of videos, you guys have seen a lot of different dogs, I never, ever, I'm very rarely ever really satisfied or happy with the work I do. Very rarely. I mean, very rarely. I have very high standards for myself, and, and I'm, I'm hard on myself. There's only one dog that I could think of that when I was done, I said, damn, that was a damn good job that I did, and that was the little Karen Terrier, Bubba, a few years back. The dog that also came in very... Actually, now that I think about it, he's the first dog I, I did that method when he peed because he would pee all over the place when I came to the crate too. And so the method I talked about in the beginning, he's the first one I did that with. So that dog went from being scared to come out of his crate to hitting a bite sleeve before he left. And I mean hitting a little bite sleeve hard, full of full of guts. There's a video of, of Bubba on, on my uh, YouTube page if you want to check him out. That's the only dog I ever said, man, I did a good job there. I really did. Well, I got to tell you, with this dog here, 
I was real happy with myself. I said, son of a bitch, I did a damn good job with this. And, and not because I got him to stop peeing, but because it was so difficult and I had to think differently. I had to really change the way I, I, I thought and I did something completely different, you know, and, and it really worked. And he hasn't peed in the crate yet, not one time, not one single time. Now, with that being said, if I go to put the leash on him outside or put the e-collar on or take it off, he will still pee a little. As a matter of fact, if you go back and watch the last video I did with him working his obedience, when I took the e-collar off, when he was on top of the, the crate top, the plastic crate, when I went to take his e-collar off, he peed a little bit. So if you see towards the end of the video, he's usually real fast jumping from place to place. He was hesitant, and I had to tell him a few times, and I didn't realize it at first, but he had peed a little on the crate. That's why he didn't want to go up there. So if you watch that video, pay attention to that. I'm not worried about that. He will get over that. That we can we can combat now and, and take care of. But the, the big job is done, and I'm truly, truly excited. But I think it's important that I share that. Because I think it's important when, when all trainers stumble across something that works in a difficult case, we got to share it. You got to share it with each other because too many people see other trainers as competition. I don't look at it like that. You know, the more information we can share, the better for ourselves, but the more dogs are going to be helped. Like I told the owner, I'm very, very honest with owners, and I told the owner about this dog, and I told him I'm at my wit's end. Man, I'm pissed. I mean, this is ridiculous. But at the same time, he even offered to come pick him up. I said, no, that's not necessary. I just need to vent and let you know what we're dealing with. And what I told him, if this dog went to the wrong trainer, it would have been bad because somebody would have been rough with this dog because it, it w would have been easy to do because he could push your buttons, okay? So again, the message behind this video, when the e-collar is taught properly, if this dog didn't understand that language already, I couldn't stop start tapping buttons because if I would have the dog would have been worse off than before but he understood what that weird sensation means at this point even already he understood hey okay what are we doing pay attention that led me to be able to move forward and get this dog's mind in a much better place so we're at like 12 minutes here guys I'll let you guys go but I thought it was really important that I share that with everyone teach the e-collar properly use it to your advantage it's going to save a ton of dogs if you allow it and don't be scared to think out the box try many different things folks all right thanks for all the support please subscribe to my page if you haven't like the video share do whatever you got to do and again thanks for all the support on the book guys you guys are tremendous the the, the reviews and the comments you guys make man i'm humbled and and, and I, I i don't deserve it but thank you guys peace out i hope this helps somebody out there